This video was inspired by a family member of mine who was diagnosed with knee osteoarthritis and received pain relief from hyaluronic acid injections in both knees, but needed another set of injections a few months later because they had apparently worn off. Well, it's not so much that the injections wore off, it's that she didn't do anything to change the stresses breaking down her knees in the first place. Her journey and confusion about all this led me to make this video because I think a lot of people aren't given the bigger picture of what's going on when it comes to treatments like these. So here are some things to consider. Cartilage is a protective layer of the joint surface that allows the joint to function well. Arthritis happens due to a breakdown of cartilage in the knee due to excessive wear and tear. Injections like hyaluronic acid, which is a naturally occurring substance in the body, or cortisone, or platelets, or stem cells, or other types of treatments, all have been shown to be beneficial. But it's important to understand that they are temporary fixes. Even knee replacements may have problems if the source of the breakdown of the knee isn't addressed. It's a lot like putting a cast on a broken thumb without realizing the other hand is hitting it with a hammer. None of these treatments address why the knee cartilage is breaking down in the first place, which is due to how you're using your body. Even people who've tried physical therapy or other exercise interventions seem to be missing the information I'll be talking about in this video. Fixing the daily stresses on your knees I'm about to discuss will help magnify or prolong or improve the results you get from whatever injection or surgical procedure you end up choosing. So this video will talk about the top three problems I've found that cause the knee to have excessive wear and tear that most people don't seem to have heard about when looking to solve their knee pain. I'm gonna take a moment here to ask you to please subscribe, like, and share this video to others who might be suffering from knee pain because you can help them. All right, so what's the first problem? It is undiagnosed femoral antiversion or retroversion. What do I mean by this? Femoral antiversion and retroversion is a scary sounding term that basically talks about the shape of the thigh bone. Some people's thigh bones are twisted inward and some people's thigh bones are twisted outward. Thigh bones that are twisted inward increase the chances of joint breakdown in the hip, the SI joint, the knee, the foot, because in general, the body doesn't like internal rotation of its lower body joints. That increases compression and therefore excessive wear and tear. If you wanna find out whether you have femoral antiversion or retroversion, please watch my video here to test your thigh bone shape. After you've watched that video and tested your thigh bone shape, I've made two other videos based on which shape you ended up having. One for femoral retroversion, which you can watch here, and one for femoral antiversion, which you can watch here to help you understand what to do about these conditions. It's important to understand that we can't change the shape of our thigh bone. However, we can change how we're using our body based on the knowledge of our thigh bone shape. The second problem that most people have that contribute to excessive knee wear and tear is their walking pattern. When we are not walking correctly, we are delivering excessive wear and tear to our joint surfaces like the knee, the hip, the SI joint, the back, and the foot and ankle. I've made a video to help you understand this that you can watch here. Changing walking patterns has a huge impact on joint and muscular pain in the lower body and back system. I strongly recommend that you watch that video to learn how to test and fix your walking pattern. And depending on whether you have more antiversion or retroversion, that fix will be a little bit different. The third thing that is driving a lot of knee breakdown is the shape of the foot, specifically whether you have a flat foot, which is called foot pronation. So I have found that it's not only the foot that is flat, but in more extreme cases of foot pronation, the ankle also becomes pronated. And when the ankle becomes pronated, it also causes the lower leg bone to internally rotate. Well, you just learned a minute ago that excessive internal rotation increases joint compression and wear and tear. Therefore, uncontrolled foot pronation can contribute to 
excessive knee wear and tear. I've developed a simple taping technique to tape up the foot and ankle to see whether this affects the knee, hip, or other areas of pain that you might have in the SI joint, pelvis, back, sciatic pain, and so forth. It's quite simple and very effective. And it gives you an easy, quick way to see whether your foot is one of the main contributors to your pain. So I hope you can get an idea that, oh, all three of these things are actually linked together. If you have femoral antiversion, which means that your thigh bone is rotated in too much, and now knowing that internal rotation of any joint increases compression, that means that we need to turn on muscles that will help decelerate that internal rotation or negate it altogether. Well, the primary muscle that does that in the lower body system is the butt muscle. And this video I mentioned earlier that talks about our gait pattern will help you learn how to turn on the butt muscle when you're walking, which will then help control or decelerate the internal rotation of your thigh bone, which will therefore then decrease the wear and tear in your hip, knee, foot, SI joint, and so forth. I want to also emphasize that if this thigh bone is antiverted and you have uncontrolled internal rotation of that thigh bone, then of course that's also going to drive more pronation into the foot because everything is collapsing inward and it's uncontrolled. So the foot's gonna follow suit. So what's basically happening is that you have an antiverted thigh bone that's not being controlled by how you walk, which is then excessively internal rotating, internally rotating, which then increases wear and tear on the knee joint and the knee joint collapses in, which then also causes the foot to collapse in. The foot collapsing in and the ankle collapsing in also reinforce the knee joint collapsing in. So the knee is now caught in this little puzzle because your gait pattern isn't controlling your lower body system well enough. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And you wouldn't believe how effective it is to just fix gait patterns, maybe tape up the foot for a week or two while you're doing that and strengthen key lower body muscles to reduce all of these forces. It will significantly remove forces from your knee joint and hopefully either prolong the effects of the injections or knee replacement surgeries or whatever other procedures you have or eliminate the need for those altogether. I've seen it time and time again in my clinic. Now there is one other thing that's contributing to my family member's knee breakdown and that's the fact that she has hypermobile joints. Hypermobile joints basically means that our ligaments are too long. Ligaments attach from bone to bone and help stabilize joints. An easy way to determine whether you have hypermobile joints is just simply hold out your arms from your body like this. You can see that my elbow is basically straight when I do this. Someone who is hypermobile, their elbow will be able to bend backwards. That is not how an elbow should move. It shouldn't be able to bend backwards. So if, you're, if you can bend your elbow backwards, it means that your ligaments are a bit loose. The other test that you can perform to see whether you're hypermobile is just simply standing. And if your knees can bend backwards, then that also means that you're hypermobile. The knees and the elbows are two joints that should not be able to bend backwards. If they do, it means that your ligaments are a little bit too long and need more stabilization. So that stabilization comes in large part by using your body better. In regards to the lower body system, it means walking better. It also means understanding the shape of your thigh bone and the effect of foot pronation on your ankle, knee, hip, SI joint, pelvic, or back pain. So to recap, I recommend that you watch my video of, to test the shape of your thigh bone, and then I recommend you either watch my femoral retroversion or my femoral antiversion videos to understand what to do with that information. Secondly, I recommend that you watch this video to start fixing your walking pattern and reduce destructive forces that are acting through your whole lower body and back system. Lastly, if you have a flat foot or flat foot and ankle and want to try my taping technique, you can do that by purchasing one of my uh, home programs and that link is below. So many of you watching this may have more than just knee pain. You may have hip pain, foot pain, SI joint pain, sciatic pain, back pain or whatever, and you would probably benefit from watching my free masterclass, and that sign up link is below. It will help walk you through a couple tests to help you understand 
some of these unseen forces that are likely acting on your body that you haven't heard about before that are contributing to your chronic pain in these areas. So I hope to see you there. Lastly, I've developed home programs to help people solve their pain from head to toe. Those can be found on my rickolderman.com website and that link is below. And I also have a um, discount code for you if you end up buying uh, one of those programs. I hope this information has been helpful for you.